welcome from me to this week's Whistle Test with music tonight from Fanny, David Bowie, Rick Wakeman and John Prine and in the studio, Bertha and Mike Hug. But it's Bertha who starts us off. They're gigging around the country until the end of this month and to coincide with their visit, their first LP has just been released and some of the things on the album are outstanding, I think. Here's the song that opens the first side and this is called Free Spirit. Welcome to this week's Whistle Test with music tonight from Fanny, David Bowie, Rick Wakeman and John Prine. And in the studio, Bertha and Mike Hug. It's Bertha who starts us off, in fact. They're gigging around the country until the end of this month, and to coincide with their visit, their first LP has just been released. And some of the things on the album are outstanding, I think. Here's a song that opens the first side, and this is called Free Spirit. <laughs> you and me, make it a natural lead. Could it be that I want wear hair, I won't last forever more. Just sit back and relax a while and enjoy this a little
say the first tonight from Bertha and that was free spirit and there'll be another number from the new LP later on in the program in the meantime a preview of a record due for release here next January it's the first solo LP by Rick Wakeman recording for which began last February and which was completed just a couple of weeks ago it's basically a keyboards album two mellotrons various pianos organ synthesizer and harpsichord are among them and Rick is joined on the album by a goodly selection of some of our best musicians Steve Howe and Mike Egan on guitars Chris Squire on bass, Bill Bruford on drums, Lisa Strike, Barry St. John and Judy Powell on vocals, who are all on this particular track. The album's called The Six Wives of Henry VIII, and this is the track which opens the LP, Catherine of Aragon. <laughs> Good, I think. Rick Wakeman from his LP, The Six Wives of Henry VIII, due for release in January, and that was Catherine of Aragon. And I'll be talking with Rick Wakeman later on in the programme. I mentioned early on that as well as Bertha would have some film tonight of Fanny, so it's very much a ladies' programme. For me, at any rate, the styles of the two bands are fairly different, and I honestly don't think that a comparison which is made on the grounds that they're two lady bands is really particularly valid. The emergence of Maggie Bell, particularly, has shown that ladies can not only stand on an equal footing to their male counterparts and gain the respect of the people who listen to their music because of their quality as musicians, but also in the same way as Janis Joplin, Bessie Smith and others, capture areas of emotion and feeling which men often find impossible to express. Things have changed a great deal since Honey Lantry caused such a stir as drama with the Honeycombs in 1964. So anyway, this is Fanny, filmed at KTLA State... Fanny at KTLA TV studio in Los Angeles, and that was Young and Dumb. Just about three months ago, Mike Hug, one of the members of the old Manfred Mann Band, released his first solo LP called Somewhere. It's a very thoughtful and beautifully constructed LP, and he's here with us in the studio on his own to do a couple of songs for us from the album. A welcome, then, to Mike Hug.
Richard Bardot, Marilyn Monroe, or Wendy Wright. Four-handed boogie woogie on a Saturday night. That was Blue Suede Shoes again. This is somewhere from my new album. Like hug, 
Thank you very much indeed. I've known and have felt very much involved with the music of David Bowie now for many years. My involvement really goes back to the days when David was making lovely records like Love You Till Tuesday and Little Bombardier, very much in his Anthony Newley style around 1967-68. Space Oddity at the time was very different from anything David had done before, confirmed by the subsequent single and album releases, perhaps the most natural and least produced things he's ever done. It was with the man who sold the world that he began to move towards Ziggy Stardust, with another change for Hunky Dory on the way. He's never played safe, just as you expect him to consolidate. He moves on again, and it really is hard sometimes to keep up with what he's doing. I've never thought of him strictly as a rock musician. When we first met, he was just beginning work with a band called Feathers, a three-piece mixed-media band using dance, mime and poetry, as well as music. The Beckenham Arts Lab, which took up so much of his time around 1969-70, was a very complex one in terms of the number of different projects which David wanted to attempt. A magazine newspaper, a theatre, poetry readings and a dance company, as well as the folk club there, which was active for several months. His concert then at the Rainbow a few weeks ago was, for me at any rate, very much a natural development of the things he'd been doing for years. And in fact, that's David's consistency. It's his music that's constantly changing. It was with great interest that I watched the piece of film that we're going to show in a second. It really was. I think uh, it's an important piece of reference. It's part of a 30-minute film based around David, made as a pilot for television, but never shown. So here's David Bowie, Vintage 1969. <laughs> surprise that isn't it that's david bowie anyway from 1969 and that was space oddity uh when we played the rick wakeman track early on in the program i said uh, that rick would be here to chat with us you weren't really expecting to be here tonight rick were you no i went to the motor show <laughs> yeah no i didn't expect to be here it's yeah. uh, a bit sudden i only came in for the drink <laughs> and i had the drink and it's gonna be quite hard to say anything but yeah there you go. You were telling me just now that you actually the first session that you did was with David. Yeah, the very first session I did was the the original Space Oddity, which wasn't that one. That was mm. a re-recording mm. done at Trident with Terry Cox from Pentangle, Herbie Flowers, and myself. Mm. That was back in 1970, I think. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's the very first session I ever did, and I can't remember getting a check from it, <laughs> which is what we were talking about. <laughs> in the, it was quite strange. Tell us a little bit about your own album, Rick, because. Uh, all I've heard from it so far is the track that we played early on in the programme. Yeah, that, that track isn't really... Uh, um, we well, can't really make any comparison between the tracks. Uh, that isn't... Um, a, uh, I can't think of a suitable... Representative? Well, yeah, it's not really... Yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, it's not really representative of, of, of the album because each track is totally different because mm. I got different feelings from, from each of the wives. The album was really conceived back in February, although I did start on it before that. I couldn't find anything uh, to latch on to um, musically mm. because I can't sing at all. Uh, I can't write lyrics. I'm a dreadful lyricist. And I wanted desperately to try and make an album purely of music mm. that people could listen to and, and get something from, good feelings from. And it's very, very hard to make an album of say 36 minutes of pure music. How did you go about each track? Rick? Did you presumably did a lot of research on? on the yeah, it, it, it started um, uh, when I wanted to try and find something to latch onto myself to write music for. Mm. And we were in America uh, doing lots of flights, flights every day, and used to pick up books at bookstores at the airport. And I picked up a book called The Private Life of Henry VIII. Mm. And the first chapter was a brief synopsis of the six wives' lives. And one of the tracks that I recorded back the previous December, uh, but had never finished because I, I, I couldn't uh, relate to it at all. Mm. It related very much to Catherine of Aragon, and uh, another one that I'd done related to Anne Boleyn, uh, in my own feelings for what, for what they'd done and the lives that they'd led. Mm. And it, I really looked forward then to getting back at the end of the tour and going in the studio and, and trying to redo those tracks, which I did do. Then I picked on each wife separately, read as much as I could about them, got personal feelings from them, and then went and recorded a track for each of them. So each track really represents your personal feelings? Personal about feelings, them. yeah. They're all done in different places, and they all sound totally different. Mm. It's a very strange album. You were talking early on about us not really taking too literally the sort of historical uh, yeah, run of the album. Um, it, it's not all sort of in the Baroque era. Mm. 
which it, it should theoretically be, and it doesn't all contain Baroque instruments. There's lots of, of uh, in the not the strict sense of the word, there's a lot of sort of rock and roll on it, mm. um, which is designed according to my feelings for each wife. The uh, uh, Jane Seymour track was done at St Giles Cripplegate Church, mm. but when we recorded about five minutes of church organ, we took it back and destroyed it with various synthesizers which is not meant to crucify the feeling of a church organ, but just to show the comparison between old and new. Mm. Uh, was Jane Seymour had a, although she um, died young, she had a very old, old sort of head on her. Mm. And it was to try and compare the two things and put them together. It's all personal feelings, they're not yeah. historically correct. I mentioned some of the names of some of the people who worked on the album with you. Who, who were you working with uh, overall? Well, I've been very lucky. I've done a lot of sessions... Um, in the short time I've been sort of working and I was lucky enough to be able to pick upon the ideal musicians mm. per track mm. uh, I used Steve, Chris Bill and Alan from the band Bill's not with the band now uh, but only only on one track, the track we heard tonight mm. um, because I didn't want to use them too much because it, I didn't want it at all to end up anything like a Yes album mm. um, I used uh, Dave Winter was the old bass player with If. Uh, Chaz Cronk was bass player with Philip Goodhan Tate. And uh, a session bass player called Les Hurdle. On guitars, Mike Egan, Steve Howe, um, and Dave Lambert from Straws. Mm. And drums, Bill Bruford, Alan White, and Barry D'Souza. Because it's taken you a long time to record the album, it's too, been, Rick, hasn't It's it? been eight months, yeah. But is, that, is that mostly because Yes have been so busy? Yeah, well, we've done, in between that, we've done four American tours. Mm. Well, we started one before I, I started the album, and three in between. So it's a matter, been a matter of the time I've been home doing the album in between that, those times. Mm. It's been pretty hard. Uh, you sort of come home one day and you're in the studio the following day. And then the main problem is that you listen back to stuff that you did three months ago. You think, yeah, well, that's that's not what I went, meant to do, you know, mm. you think, well, that's Pony, and you throw it away, and you start that track again, so you're automatically behind time. Mm. Just finally, before you go, Rick, what about future things now? I know that Yes are going back on tour again in about a week's time, aren't they? Yeah, we go back on Friday, back to New York, start another tour for four mm. weeks. Then we come back, and we've got a three-month break, but we're going to do a small English tour. Mm. Um, Any idea of the venues here? Yeah, we're doing the Rainbow... I, most probably get the dates wrong. It's in December. I think it's the 16th is one date. Mm. We're doing two dates there because uh, we want to use proper side projection and back projection for that gig. Mm. Problem is doing a, a large English tour that we've got so much equipment we just can't cart it around. Yeah, right. Which makes a big problem. Mm. But we're going to do some dates here. Yeah, good old England. Right. <laughs> That's the one. Thanks for coming in. Thank you very much. Week. We'll see you soon. Thanks a lot. Some music now from uh, the new John Prine album, his second, called Diamond in the Rough, and released this coming Friday. This is a track called Clocks and Spoons. So there we are, John Prine from his new LP, Diamonds in the Rough, and that was Clocks and Spoons. Harry Chapin and Ellis will be our studio guests on Whistle Test next week, but tonight Bertha closed the programme with another number from their new LP, and this is Too Much Woman for a Henpecked Man. Bye-bye. I wanna be loved, not tease. I don't want no man. Here's me, here's me. my ear. I can't respect, respect. Cause I'm a hard woman at hell, but I know that. I know that. Oh,
Cause a weak man I can't stand I'm too much of a woman For a hand paint man He's got to be scared I use his hands And it can be Yeah. 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 Yeah.